This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I have some really startling revelations about Ethereum that have, that have been a bit overshadowed by the Russia Ukraine news. But I wanted to talk about how Ethereum is banker coin, and you're not going to believe the actors that are involved with Ethereum. So to talk about this, we have to start with a guy named Joe Lubin, who's a Canadian-American entrepreneur. He was one of the original contributors to Ethereum, and he was more on the finance side of it, but he was very involved in the fundraising, in the ICO for Ethereum. He also happened to be the founder of a very important company for Ethereum called Consensus. And what you're gonna learn in this video, I think is really going to going to blow your mind. First of all, Joe Lubin, we, there's a tape that has now surfaced where Joe Lubin tells people how to disguise their purchases. This was in the Ethereum ICO, the initial coin offering. And basically he said they were gonna limit the unit size, the amount of Ethereum you could purchase from a single email address or identity, but he made it very clear that they'd be happy if you hid your identity and use this to piece together a much larger holding. So this was basically a way for whales to disguise their purchases of Ethereum. And I'll, I'll link to this, uh, this video, this audio recording in the description notes below. But why is this important? Well, it's important because it means that Ethereum ownership is probably much more concentrated than people believe, simply because this shows that Lubin was telling whales how to get involved with Ethereum. Now, if you have concentrated if, if you have concentrated ownership in a cryptocurrency that is moving to proof of stake, and I would suggest this is the main reason that Ethereum is moving to proof of stake. They don't really care about ESG concerns, the environmental concerns, but it's more a way of cementing the power of these original whale, whales and insiders. Because under a proof of stake system, a proof of stake consensus mechanism, the more coins, the more ETH you own, the more control you have over the protocol as a validator. Now, this is not true at all with Bitcoin's proof of work, which makes it a much more neutral cryptocurrency. Now, it's widely believed that Joe Lubin is also an ETH whale as well. Forbes, a couple of years ago, reported that he owned between 5 and 10% of all the Ethereum in circulation. So this is who we're talking about. We're talking about a guy who was present at the beginning who instructed other whales how to acquire large concentrated positions, and he himself still presumably owns a large concentrated position in Ethereum. But it gets even worse than that. Before I go on, though, I'd ask you if you're finding this helpful so far to hit that subscribe and like button. So in, in addition to being an ETH whale and an early founder of Ethereum, Joe Lubin started a company called Consensus, which has its headquarters in Brooklyn and then also has offices in Washington, D.C. and San Francisco. This is a very important uh, infrastructure company and software company for the Ethereum network, simply because unlike Bitcoin, it's impossible for regular people to run a full ETH node. It's so bulky and the technical requirements are quite complicated. So one of the things that Consensus does is it spun off and started a company called Infura that provides infrastructure for Ethereum and allows people to outsource running a full node to this company that again, Infura's, Infura is owned by uh, by Consensus, which is controlled by Joe Lubin, the founder and ETH whale. Now, Infura is so important that when it goes down, it totally paralyzes the ETH network. When this happened back in 2020, all the crypto exchanges had to stop people from, from withdrawing their ETH. Now, in addition to owning Infura, which is a key piece of ETH, uh, infrastructure. Uh, Consensus also owns MetaMask, which is clearly the most widely used Ethereum and DeFi wallet. So this is a very important uh, company that has a lot of influence. As we've seen in the last few days, MetaMask has been blocking, uh, blocking access to certain countries, to Venezuela, to Iran, and this is because they run their uh, their their wallet through Infura. So you can see this is a huge mess with Joe Lubin at the helm and controlling everything. Lots of reports of people not being able to use MetaMask and Infura in Iran and in Venezuela. This is not what you want for a new neutral currency. 
certainly. And I'll, I'll link to a couple of these reports uh, that are happening on Reddit. But it gets much, much worse than this. What has happened is consensus. There's always been a lot of uh, rumors and talk about how there's a lot of sexual harassment at this company. There's a lot of hard drug usage. That's basically an insane place uh, to work. And again, I'm getting all this uh, from publicly available information on the internet. I'm not sure if what uh, what parts of it are true, and I'm not sure. I don't know Joe Lubin personally, so please don't sue me. I'm sure you're a great guy. I'm just linking to articles here as a YouTuber. But it, it has surfaced that consensus is being sued by shareholders saying that uh, something very corrupt and slimy went on in August of 2020. What basically happened, and this is again alleged, I don't know if this happened, but this is uh, there is a lawsuit uh, trying to decide this, but it looks like MetaMask and Infura, the infrastructure, the wallet company and the infrastructure company were illegally moved without a share a full shareholder vote, they were moved from Consensus AG, which is a Swiss company, to a new company called Consensus Software Incorporated, CSI. And again, without a full shareholder vote. And that's why some of the shareholders, I think 35 of the shareholders, are getting together to sue Joe Lubin and to sue Consensus uh, AG without uh, for, for basically moving the two crown jewels of the company to a new company, which of course is controlled by Joe Lubin. Now guess who is also a major owner in this new company, in the new consensus company, which now owns MetaMask and Infura? Well, it turns out that JP Morgan took a 10% stake in this new company in CSI, consensus software. As part of this, according to, to the, the lawsuit, the key assets like MetaMask and Infura were valued at preposterously low valuations for this transfer. So MetaMask, for example, when they did this transaction, the whole company MetaMask, which is a subsidiary of Consensus, was valued at $4.4 million for the purposes of the transaction. So what they basically did, what Joe Lubin did, according to this, this lawsuit, what he allegedly did, was he moved these two crown jewels to a new company that he also controls, and then he gave JP Morgan a 10% stake in this new company. So you now have JP Morgan being a 10% shareholder, at least in a company that controls the major Ethereum infrastructure and also controls the MetaMask wallet. And if you think this is an okay thing, and if you're comfortable sleeping with your Ethereum at night, I don't know what is wrong with your head. It turns out though, when you look into it, that there has been a lot of deals back and forth between JP Morgan and consensus. And if you read this article, it was actually published on the consensus website. We have Joe Lubin being quoted in this article as saying, even before the very first block on Ethereum was mined and consensus was formed, we've collaborated with JP Morgan on Ethereum proofs of concept and production systems. So JP Morgan was intimately involved in the birth of Ethereum, and they are now a major shareholder in a company that controls Infura and MetaMask, that can ban people, that controls the infrastructure. Joe Lubin goes on to say, we look forward to continuing our multifaceted partnership with JP Morgan for many years. So if you don't understand what's going on here, how Ethereum has been planned by Joe Lubin, by Vitalik Buterin, and JP Morgan to be banker coin, I don't know what to say. And it turns out that the Bitcoin maxis who've been warning about this for many years, the more information we get, about the concentration of ETH holdings, how Joe Lubin was trying to teach people how to buy, teach whales how they could buy uh, much larger positions. And now this partnership with JP Morgan it is really appalling. And as we said, Consensus has been working with JP Morgan and JP Morgan has been working with Ethereum since the very early days, even before the initial offering. Again, JP Morgan now owns 10% of a new company that owns MetaMask and Infura. So what's happening here is you really are, uh, combined with the move to proof of stake, what, what Ethereum is basically doing is reinventing the fiat system controlled by the bankers and proof of stake will make this even worse. Could it get any worse? Well, it actually does get worse when you realize that Consensus is a partner organization with the World Economic Forum. This is the World Ec the WFE, WEF website. It's a little bit hard to see. But basically, consensus is listed here as a trusted partner. And if, if you're working closely with the World Economic Forum, you are definitely an enemy in my 
book, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of connections between the World Economic Forum and the and Ethereum. So here, for example, is a, a woman named Aya Miyaguchi, who's the executive director of the Ethereum Foundation. She's also listed on the World Economic Forum as someone who's co cooperating closely. So here you have a company, you have Consensus, which basically controls. ETH infrastructure. It's partnering with JP Morgan, which also owns a percentage of the new company. And all of them together are not just working with the bankers at JP Morgan, but they're working with the World Economic Forum. So all the people who proclaim that ETH is freedom money, I would suggest instead that it really is banker coin. It's World Economic Forum coin. It's JP Morgan coin. And if you, if you own Ethereum, this is something you really need to consider. If you want to go a little bit more in depth, into Ethereum's history, I have two videos from last year, Ethereum's Dirty History and Ethereum's Dirty History Part 2, where I talk about the ICO, I talk about the DAO hack, and I talk about um, things that will not, not surprise you once you realize now the connection to the World Economic Forum and the connection to JP Morgan. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.